Um, and then another question we have, you know, uh, some of our funding is directed toward watersheds uh, with one watershed, one plant. Um, what watershed do you live in if you know? Surprisingly, Red Eye Lake is probably the heart of real irrigation in that in this region. Uh, then a couple more questions related to uh, irrigation is: uh, Do you use irrigation schedule? Any irrigation scheduling methods now? Mixed bag there, which I guess doesn't surprise me for uh, the adoption in this area at the moment. So, uh, so uh, we're going to have uh, Aaron Newville, the district manager at East Otterton, Molina SWCDs, uh, talking about local funding opportunities uh, that we have in this region. Again, thanks everybody for coming, and I just want to uh, uh, thank Nate and Nicole for doing all the organization work for this event. Um, putting an event like this together is just not an easy task. There's a lot of planning that goes into it, lining up the speakers, getting the venue, making sure we get good donuts and coffee and all that other stuff. So again, there's a lot of stuff that, that comes into that, and without that pre-work, we aren't able to, to do this. And then thank you to the vendors and the, the other people that are planning on speaking because we wouldn't be able to do this either without them. Um, so I'm just up here to, to really talk about the SWCD uh, assistance that you guys can get or, or the funding opportunities or financial assistance that you guys can kind of get through our office, um, which includes our partners, right? Um, so we're just going to kind of do a little bit of a review on that. Um, so the first thing Everybody knows what an SWCD is, right? I know I've talked about it at these meetings over and over and over again, um, but this is my, I'm obligated to do this because of the SWCD. I think a lot of people don't really understand who we are. Uh, we do have local boards that are elected. You guys voted for our board members in the last election. They're normally on the back side of the ballot or off the side of the ballot. A lot of times there's nobody running against them. Uh, but they are a really important component of our work because they're the they're the folks that really direct me uh, of where they want to see our focus. Uh, so I think it's really important that we recognize that we have those, um, and we're really here. Um, I've got one board member that that just continually comes in our my head that we're here to educate and enable people to do stuff. Right? Um, a lot of us went to school for natural resources management. We don't do natural resources management or land management. We provide assistance to you so that you can do that, right? Because it's your property. We're not actively out there doing that. We're just providing that technical and financial assistance so that you can adopt best management practices 
Um, so it really is, we're, we're, we work with people in those things. I think that that's a really important thing. Without you guys in the room or the people that we work with, we don't get anything done. Um, and, and that's a really important thing that I try to make sure that all of our staff understand that um, and build relationships with you so that we, that we trust each other and we can do those different things. Most of our programs are voluntary. Um, we do have a few regulatory things that we get involved with, but for the most part, the people that we work with want to do what we're working with them on. So again, that's another really important thing. We work with private landowners that voluntarily want to do stuff. Um, we'll do that. The other important factor is we don't have any ability to raise any of our funds, right? So we're the only locally elected government that doesn't have any taxing authority. So when you guys get your property tax statement or whatever, uh, we're not on it. We have to kind of beg and plead for our money. Uh, but I'm going to have an ask at the end of my presentation later uh, for you guys to help with that a little bit. Um, but again, we've been very fortunate in Otter Tail and in Ludington County, where we do have some pretty good support from our county, um, and we've been really lucky in our uh, asks for state grants. Um, I can tell you in the 30 years that I've been around, uh, well, even the 18 years I've been in Ludington County, our budgets have gone through the roof, and part of that is through the Water and Land Legacy, and we'll talk a little bit about here. Um, so we, we, we try to get as much money as we can. So I'm going to step into just the financial opportunities that are available to you, right? Um, when you guys are trying to do something, sometimes those are limited. Uh, we don't have an uh, open checkbook. I have a budget that I have to stick with, but we're trying to do that. And I told you guys before at different meetings that my goal, and I think is all of our boards, is to bring as much of that financial assistance to our area as possible and do whatever we can to do that so that we can provide you guys with uh, either incentives or cost share or whatever so that you guys can adopt some practices that make sense to you. Um, the first one, again, everything that we do is in partnership. We can't raise funding ourselves. So one of our long-standing partners is the, the NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service, USDA. Uh, and they have, they're the biggest game in town, to be honest with you. They, their programs are millions of dollars at the state level. Um, and the three big programs that we do are the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. And that one is really to set up to, to get you guys to make a change, right? If you're doing something, they're going to pay you incentive to make a change to do things better. So whether that's getting into covered crops or um, full pressure conversion, stuff like that, trying to help you make a change. Um, the other one that people may have been involved with is the Conservation Stewardship Program. And that's, that's a program that's really trying to get people to go to the next level. You guys are at a base level, you're doing certain things, um, you get some additional funding, and you have to commit to doing something more to be into the, the Conservation Security Program. Um, so it's trying to go to get you from you know, this level to the next level of conservation adopting these different practices. Uh, and then the conservation is your program. Um, again, the CRP, uh, and that's really trying to take those sensitive lands out of production and getting them into uh, lesser use or get back to uh, a more conserving use of black wildlife habitat. So those are the big three that, that we work with with the Natural Resource Conservation Service. They have other programs, but these are the most common ones that, that we do. I'm going to talk a little bit about this a little bit later, but there's going to be a lot of money coming through these programs. Um, probably more money than we, it, it's ridiculous the amount of money when we start talking about it, unless it's supposed to be coming down. Um, so to me, that's an opportunity for you guys, right? It's an opportunity for us to try to capitalize on that. If you guys are thinking about that, I'm going to encourage you to start thinking about, not this year, but are there changes that you want to make out two or three years in the future? And if there are, Get in and start talking to Troy and Mitch and people or Ivan in our offices um, and, and start thinking about that. And again, if you can think about that two to three years or four years down the road of what you might want to try, maybe this is an opportunity for you to use those programs to be able to do that. The other thing, and again, um, there's some special projects. Um, this regional conservation partnership program, and we've talked about this at these meetings too, um, we kind of led the charge with a 20 county group, the Department of Ag, DNR, well not really DNR, but Bowser, Department of Health, and a bunch of different partners um, to get some additional funding directly dedicated to irrigation stuff and adopting the technologies and stuff like that. So we were successful in getting a three and a half million dollar commitment. And it was supposed to be a five year program, right? We've had two signups. We had one, 
it took us a while to get everything organized, about a year to get organized, we had a quick sign up, limited, um, kind of limited a little bit. Um, I think we funded like 12 contracts across this 20 county area. Well, then in the fall, we had our second sign up, and uh, we had like 90 applications come in. Uh, I think 40 some of those ranked up as high priority. <coughs> we used up the whole amount of money that we could. So all that funding is completely gone. Um, and again, I think of, in, in, when I'm looking at it, I kind of was hoping that it would get spread out regionally. Um, but we're going to take a lion's share of the money here and just not our tail of our union companies. And I think that's partly because of these types of meetings that we've had and informing you guys of what we're doing. And plus, I can directly draw a link to this project back to those egg and groundwater meetings that we had five years ago, I think it was now, uh, with the report that came from that, because that's the information that we used to write this project. Uh, I'm hoping that with our success of getting money out the door, and again, there's going to be a bunch of money coming down through the feds, that we can ask for more. But it's definitely showing a need. We weren't even able to fund half of the applications that we can um, so again, it's, it's a, I think it's a great program. Um, if you had asked me six months ago, I thought it was worth the work. I'm not sure, but when after we had this guy sign up and saw the results of it, it's like yes, this is going to be a program that really helps. So again, stay tuned for that. If you didn't get funded in the last time, don't get discouraged. We're going to continue to try to find funding for you. I think that's for adopting the technologies, the soil moisture sensors, the variable rate type stuff, things like that, to kind of take you to that next level of uh, irrigation water management. So then, then we come to state funding. And this is a this is kind of crazy too. And again, I've been around for uh, 30 years in the soil and water world and last 10 have been, our, our funding levels have come up for project type stuff. Um, and it's really because of the Clean Water Amendment Legacy Amendment uh, that we're getting that. So the one water system one plans, you've heard me talk about that. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Once we got those done, uh, we have all the watersheds right here, except for the Crow Wing. The Crow Wing, we're just getting started with that plan, and I'm hoping that that plan's done in the next year or so, and then we'll be able to access these watershed based funds. And that's going to be between $700,000 and $1.5 million per watershed. Sounds like a lot of money, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but we do have to split that up. We also have the opportunity to apply for competitive grants. Uh, we haven't actively pursued any of the East Otter Tail in the last couple of years because we had so many things going on. We didn't think that we could afford the time or the staff to be able to put attention at a new um, grant application. But I think that that's going to change here in the next couple of years because we're going to have all these plans done. Um, we're going to figure out how to spend those partnership based on location fundings. Uh, and we're going to be able to do that. And then there's going to be some climate initiative stuff coming. Now, we'll talk a little bit about that. We did get a, a small taste of that this last year. Uh, the state provided us with what they call their soil health climate initiative grants, but it was like $15,000. And that, that really doesn't go very far when we're talking about doing like, instead of payments for covered crops or things like that. Um, again, those are kind of trial, uh, but there's going to be potentially some additional money coming through those types of things. So let's go back to the one watershed, one plants. Uh, it's really kind of a change in how we do things. We used to do water planning based on county level. Um, and several years ago, we went, it's probably not the right way to do it. Um, we should probably work with our partners in the watersheds and started doing that. Um, for instance, and, I, and this is funny because I got the hard to tell map up, but I got the budget for the red. Uh, but again, it shows the, the difficulty of doing this. So when we're doing this, we have several partners, right? So $700,000 sounds like a lot of money for two years. But then I have to go through the budget and we have to allocate that out based off of the things that were in our plan and then split it up between those partners. Uh, so it does get watered down a little bit, but it's still a lot more money than we've ever had. Um, so if it's a good thing that we got this problem, we're going to be able to do our projects. We may not be able to fund everybody. We may have to get to a point where it was a prioritization and things like that. But again, it's still an additional amount of funding that's coming. And then we've got those competitive grants, right? The one that we most recently had was this cover crop demonstration grant uh, that will be finished up probably this year uh, with a three year project. And again, that's where we see a need. There's an opportunity for us to apply for those things. If we're getting a whole bunch of applications in the one water from the, the watershed based implementation funding, we don't have enough money there. 
we can say, hey, we've got a bunch of shovel ready projects and put that into a competitive grant, send that down to St. Paul and see if we can get additional funding for that. So again, that's just kind of my process. Again, my goal is to get as much funding here as possible. Right? It's always been kind of our goal. The other program where there's a little bit of funding for is the Minnesota Ag Water Electrification Program. So we've talked about that before. So it's a program where you sign up, you get uh, you go through a, an assessment process to see if you meet the standards to get certified. Um, there's some benefits from getting certified. Um, you may or may not be able to get certified depending on your practices. But again, it's showing you where you could potentially do better, um, even if you can get certified. But they also have funding available. So they have uh, the state has some funding. I think you can get up to five thousand dollars a year uh, to do projects to either help you get certified or take you to another level. Um, and then there's also another RCPP, which there's a pot of money specifically set aside for those people that are in that program. Um, and again, I'm trying to encourage as many people to sign up for that program as possible because I think it's good. It's, it, it, one of the things that came out in our egg and groundwater issues was we need to change the narrative, right? I had a conversation this morning about the lakes people pointing their finger at the, the egg people. This is a way to change that, right? I know that we had one producer who got certified since between two lakes. We put an article on the paper. A couple weeks later, he got some thank yous from the lake associations. You know, saying thank you for doing the things that you're doing. So again, it's changing that narrative a little bit. But there is some potential funding sources available through that. The other thing is that there's an egg PMP loan program, or best management practice loan program. You know, this isn't free money, you gotta pay it back. Um, but it does help people get over the hump of being able to do that. So it's maybe a lower interest rate. Um, probably hasn't been Real popular the past several years because interest rates have been low uh, with the recent uptake in interest rates. Um, the banks are actually sending people to saying, you know, if somebody wants to buy a new piece of equipment, the banks are saying, hey, you can get a better interest rate if you go here. There's a limited pot of money, but it does cycle through. So we revolve that fund. So if we, you know, if I got a loan, when I pay it back, I can get loaned out to the home. Okay? So if it goes back, we can continue with the revolve that fund um, back out to everyone. So again, it's just another. Uh, program that's available for people. And then future programs. And this is where I'm talking about this insane amount of potential money that's coming up. Um, especially on a federal level. Um, and this is going to come down through the, the EQIP program, the CSP program, uh, RCPP programs, right? And you guys have all heard the news, whether we agree with the amount of money that's being spent or not, this is stuff that's already been allocated at the federal level. These are, these are bills that have been passed, have been Agree to whether or not they allocate the money or not. But again, we have the infrastructure investment and jobs. $1.2 trillion, trillion dollars that are going to be coming down over the next several years. We've got the Inflation Reduction Act. $738 billion is going to be coming down through these programs. It's going to be a lot of money coming in. And again, we need to take advantage of that if at all possible. Um, and then we've got the state budget stuff, right? So. And again, I probably I'm a little bit involved with our legislative efforts through the SWCDs, and the governor's budget has a lot of new potential money coming in, and it's revolving around climate initiatives, right? I don't care what you call it, climate initiatives, it's conservation. It's potential funding that can come down to get you guys to, to help you guys adopt new practices that you want to have. So again. Just, just the one that I pulled out of his proposed budget is talking about $27 million of new money, never been there before, for a biennial, so $13.5 million for your state water for soil health initiatives, so for a soil health program. That's huge. I mean, that's that's cover crop money. That's stuff that we just don't have a lot of funding for. I don't know exactly what that will equal out for each daughter telling what needed because it gets spread across the whole state. But again, it's money that we didn't have before. Um, and, and again, I, whether you agree with the politics or not, to me, it's like if, if it gets passed, great, we're going to try to use it here, right? Um, so I think that that's, again, there's a lot of potential for that. The other thing is private corporations. There's a kind of a push nationwide for, again, based off the climate stuff, there's a lot of these corporations that are doing things to reduce their carbon footprint. It basically, it's pollution training, right? So there's these carbon markets where they're paying people to plant trees, cover crops, or people, stuff like that. I haven't got that figured out. It's one of those things that it's there, it's kind of it's been talked about for a long time, and you start to see stuff in it. 
overseeing places like General Mills, um, different things like that that are coming in and working with SWCDs for pilot projects to kind of figure this out. Um, so I think that there's the, the market kind of drives that or the need for it and the public and what they're looking for. Um, there's probably going to be some different requirements that are put out there, maybe a tenure contract and different things like that. So I think it's, it's just something to put on your radar to see if it's something that fits your operation. It may not. I have no idea you know, what the different requirements are coming down. Uh, but like even Enbridge has a, there was a program that came out where they planted trees in, your, in an area that wasn't planted to trees right now. We had a contract and left them in for 50 years. We're getting a pretty decent payment on it. So again, a lot of these uh, power companies or energy companies and things like that are sticking fun in it. So again, just kind of keep your, your ears to that and we'll kind of watch it and see if we can't find out some more information. So I got an ask for you guys, right? I said that. Um, I had a conversation this morning, and I've heard this a couple of times. People really appreciate the work that we do, right? Um, and, it's, and it's coming back to that funding piece. And I don't know how, if any of you guys are in contact with your local legislators or anything, but if you are, maybe just throw in there, hey, if we work with our SWCDs, we really appreciate the work that they do. Um, can you make sure that they're funded at a, at a level that they do that? Otherwise, we won't. Not, we can't continue to do these types of things. I think it's really important that they don't just hear from me, because they do, but if they hear from you guys or your groups that you're a part of, a Farm Bureau or whatever, the Farmers Union, whatever, if you're talking about that and talking about legislative efforts, maybe just throw that into those conversations and, and maybe try to get that message to those state legislators, because it, it is really important uh, that we can continue to do the work that we're doing. Does anybody have any questions about the Funding stuff. 